This morning, I want to speak the word of God, and I've entitled the message, From Milk to Solid Food. Just like a call to discipleship, and this is just to challenge us to understand why should we grow in the things of God. And I pray that God is going to speak to us in a very special way so that we grow. Um, many of you, if you have a baby at six months and you are not seeing any growth, even if they are not crying, you would want to go and see the doctor. And this applies to us. I know some of you were born again in 1972 when my mother was just prophesying uh, that she will become, she will have a son. Some of you were born um, again in, in uh, 1980 when the prophecy was almost coming fulfilled. But how is your growth in that? On, 14th, that, on, th on February 13, 2011, Y.J. Drayman, of, for mayor of L.A., wrote an article, which I found somewhere and I want to share with us, a polluted society. In this article, he said, the paradox of our time in history is that we have taller buildings, but shorter tempers, wider freeways, but narrow viewpoints. We spend more, but we have less. We buy more, but enjoy it less. We have bigger houses and small families, more conveniences, but less time, more degrees, but less sense, more knowledge, but less judgment, more experts, but more problems, more medicines, but less wellness. Thank God for the wellness ministry. We drink too much. Others smoke, I don't smoke. They smoke. Yeah, they spend too recklessly. They laugh too little. They drive too fast. Get angry too quickly. They stay up too late. Get up too tired. Read too seldom. Watch the TV too much. And we pray too seldom. We rarely pray. We have multiplied our possessions, but reduced our values. I should read that. We have multiplied our possession, but reduced our values. We talk too much, love too seldom, and hate too often. We have learned how to make a living, but not a life. We have added years to life, but not life to years. We have conquered the outer space. I saw some people going even to Mars, but not inner space. We have done larger things, but not better things. And I thank God for our children. One of the things that energizes me to see the children here, that is a better thing for me. Teresa, uh, you, many of you have read about her, Mother Teresa. She said, there is nothing great in this world, only small things done in a great way. You may wonder what it entails to be in church. There are small things that God wants us to do greatly. The visitation of just somebody you don't know and sit there with them. Huh? That is a small thing, but done in a better way. I appreciate these children. Let's appreciate them. Um, Pastor, we need, to, we need to buy them some, some uniform also on this day. They energize me. They put life to me. I don't know, but this is what I want. That is now church. Amen? Yes. Ah, so, uh, I will say that we have done larger things, you know, Prados, big houses, but we have not looked after these children. Sorry, I got excited there. We have cleaned up the air, but polluted the soul. I dare add that we have been too much experienced, but yet we have remained toddlers. Okay? Gone to church, but yet remained infants. We need to move from consuming milk to eating solid food. Amen? Which is good. But I want us to start eating food. So this morning, I want us to reflect what Paul writes to the Corinthians church in chapter 3, uh, from verse 1 to 17. You can turn with me in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 1, all the way to 17. That will be our main scripture this morning, and I pray that God will bless you. So if you are there, allow me to read. The Bible says this, Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants, 
Some Bible says babies in Christ. I give you milk, no solid food, for you are not ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly, for since there is jealousy and quarreling among you are not worldly. Are you not acting like mere humans? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not mere human beings? What after all is Apollos? And what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. Verse 8, the one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose. They will each be rewarded according to their own labor. For we are fellow workers in Christ's service. You are God's faith, God's building. Verse 10, by the grace of God, by the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Verse 12, if anyone builds on this foundation, using gold, be careful here there, using gold, silver, costly stones, the others will build with wood, hay, or straw. Their work will be shown for what it is. Because the day will bring it to light, it will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. And the fire will test the quality of each person's work. Verse 14, if what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved even though only as one escaping through the flames. Don't you know that you yourself are God's temple and that the Spirit lives among you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy, what a pass, will destroy that person. For God's temple is sacred and you are together, you together are that temple. Amen. That is the word of God. Allow me to pray for myself once again. Father, we thank you. Lord, as we reflect on your word, I pray that you speak to us. Speak to our minds, O oh God, that we may desire to grow in your things. We thank you for your faithfulness and goodness. For every day that you gather us to partake on your word, may you be glorified, may you be magnified in this sharing. In Jesus' name, we pray. As I said earlier on, for many of you who have joined Sitam recently, we embarked on a journey of growth for many years, and I said even before that journey, some of you have been growing. You've been in churches seeking to grow. And one of the things you come to realize is that you want to grow, that you become solid. You become rooted in the word of God. And today, my main objective is just to be able to expound to us, why are we not growing? Or where are we in our growth journey just before we get to our last stage? Actually, Engage 3 is our last stage of, of safari, but we'll be doing some cohort classes and revision and see where are we in our growth. So in my preparation and laying foundation on this passage, uh, on this uh, um, series which is beginning next week, I came across this and I found touching me, and I believe it will touch you. Amen? Verse 1. When you look at this text, you realize that Paul says that, brothers and sisters, I could not address you as the people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. We see some few things that were operating there, and one is that there were some problems in that church, and more of them were more external and worldly influence. Because these people Paul had preached to them, and he intended them that they would grow. In fact, one of the things you need to know I'm saying from milk to solid food. Paul is not actually accusing them for not eating solid food. He's accusing them for not applying the truth of the milk. Now, you need to know that. I just took it higher. This text 
He started addressing people that when I gave you milk, even you have not been nourished very well. Very good babies, when they suck on the mother's milk after six months, they grow very well. Leave alone some of us who get disappointed and say, Wacha ni ongeze ni mutota kikunywa tuma ziwa vizuri for six months. Atakuwa kitu. Bwana swe san. So Paul is addressing them. You guys are taking very nourished milk and you are not growing. I want that to sink in you. Now, before we go to the solid food, because that is engaged three. There are these people who are actually taking milk, but yet they were not being nourished. That is the text. That is the thing there. Okay? So he's telling them, you have not actually come from the womb, or else you have gone back to the womb. Now, that should sink in you. So, they were precious of the world that were combined with the weakness of flesh. They were Corinthian believers who were being referred to as a and they were yet to be fully controlled by the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, the milk was not even working. Leave alone the solid food that we were to introduce. They were still operating in their natural, let me say, their past nature, which all of us uh, do. So Paul does use the word infant or babies in Christ. So he says you are babies, okay? So the carnality of these believers was indicative of their immaturity, but yet they had no excuse of being this immature. And that is why Paul writes this letter. And it's very firm. It's very firm on them. In verse 2, he talks about the milk, because the milk is what I've told in verse 2. It's not referring to certain doctrines, like uh, praying in many things. He's just saying, I'm not seeing the Holy Spirit operate in you. Okay? I'm not seeing the milk enter your nerves and seem like it's, it's working. Okay? It was not a big doctrine of thinking of uh, bigger things. No, no, no. It was just a thing of paradigm shift that I was once lost, but now I'm saved. So he's actually asking them that there are some very easily digestible truths that you are not applying. You are not praying. Okay? I don't know what some of the truths some of you are given when you got born again, but me, I was told, go and cut off your old friends. You had some friends. I don't know what, they, they knew that my friends were not born again. That's why I was not born again. They were asked, you pray for every food you eat every day. There were simple truths like that. I know some of you don't apply them. I've seen people even when I'm in a hotel, simple truths. This is what Paul is applying. One as for son. Now, he's talking about some few things of even reading the word of God. Some of us, we only carry the word of God. They have said that clean Bibles, dirty Christian. Dirty Bible, clean Christian. Simple Bibles are not flipped. We are trying to see whether we can introduce even some simple reading of scripture. We read a lot of Facebook, but he's talking about that. So it was not of many things. If you look at what Paul is talking about, these people, there were simple things of paradigm shift. So he's talking about milk, okay? What does verse 2 say? He says, I gave you milk, not solid food. Okay? For you are not yet ready for it. He, they were not ready for it. But then, the milk is not working in through for them. What are some of the things that you need to grow in? That is my question to us as we proceed. Verse 3 talks of carnality. Now, the carnality is that these people have refused to produce an attitude because when you get born again, it's a shift of attitude. Then you really come to your mind that I'm born again. I'm no longer my old self. So you become aware of who you are. You know, allow me to take you to where we've just been in elections. Now, you must... Okay? Now, this was a matter of attitude. The attitude of these people had not changed. So they had the attitude of envy, a severe form of selfish, uh, selfishness, and it produced strife in them. Okay? Buana Sifiwe San. Praise the Lord. Now, I want you to know that when we want to grow, I'll be addressing some few concepts of growth, even a child. For many of you who we are shaping, why we are bringing our children here, we want them to catch doctrines. Now, to catch them is you make their mindset shift to know that we can serve God. Are we together? When they continue to do that, they realize 
Hey, I love the leader saying, wake up. Some of you cannot tell us even to wake up. That or does it. Okay? There's a shift of mindset that when you start taking milk and it operates in you, you can have that audacity. But if you live in the old self, it also produces another attitude in your life. Now, verse 3 again, he speaks about the spirituality against carnality. He says that when you got born again, since you are still living in your carnality, because when you get born again, now, you cannot say you go back to the womb of your mother, okay? But you need to start talking to yourself. Whatever I'm doing, is it right, okay? I say it sometimes I drive on the road. The other day I was just asking for the way to pass. But what? Somebody cannot give you way. I, I say this is tough. Then I found another person. Uh, I had to give them way. You just learn to extend love to some people. Even on the road, you become self-aware. These people were not aware. They were dragging themselves on what we call the motive. The motive was that it's me, me, and myself. Okay? Me, me, and myself. The three people that were actually fighting them. Verse 3 talks about that. But what are some characteristics? I will not go to everything because of time. As you've looked in that context, when Paul is addressing these people, he's addressing them from the perspective that their values, their values, in fact, he says there, their values and perspectives must change. For us who are Christian, what are some of the characteristics that when you take milk, you need to show some symptoms that we are children of God? Our perspectives, our values, how do we value the things of God? If we value the things of God, you will value the house of God. And by the way, we will value time. Some of you missed worship in the morning. I know you come from far, but our perspective. Now, I want you also to move from milk to solid food. Ask yourself next time that I need to be in the church at 9 a.m. Time keeping. There are many Africans and somebody was joking to us in our young professionals world. There's somebody who come late and say, oh, kumbe ni mefika mbele, oh, ni I'm very early. Yeah, they are late just because others have not come. Values, values. One as for son. By the fact that many are doing it doesn't mean that this right. So one of the things that I want you to underscore, if indeed you want to move from milk to go towards solid food, check your values. How do you value? What are your perspectives? Are they heavenly or are they earthly? Follow God's word every day and not our own nature. One of the things you realize in our safari, we talked about praying in tanks. We talked about giving we talked about power of fellowship. There are many of us who just neglect those things. Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 16 says, When your words came, I ate them, and they were my joy and my heart's delight, for I bear your name, Lord God Almighty. Now, some of you need to go and eat the word. Not, there is somebody I learned of when he read this scripture. Uh, he was caught when he was almost... Uh, he, he was almost eating Isaiah. <laughs> this is not what I'm talking about. He was eating the, 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 the pages, the pages, the pages, and uh, he was almost in Isaiah. Now, this is not what we're talking about, the value of the word of God in our lives. Some of you need to go back and even honor your father and your mother. Very simple commands like that. Eat the word of God and let it be a delight that you can honor your father and your mother. Praise the Lord. Some of us to honor our leaders. We'll be talking about that in next week when you talk about patriotism as we begin this Bible. Because many of us think that when we are Christians, there are no values attached to us. And so we just live as if we are not. My friend, when you get born again, your life is no longer yours. Amen? It belongs to God. So every decision you make must have a perspective of God. Praise the Lord. When you get born again, your life is no longer yours. I won't dare you. Many of you know that this is my life. This is my choice. Today, I want to tell you, it's no longer yours. This is solid food now. Amen. It's no longer yours. Let your perspective change. How do I look at people? How do I um, look at anything and everything? Your perspective must change. Let the word of God be a delight to us. Amen.
Their goals. The goal is the word of God. As I've said in the other passage, uh, Jeremiah delights in the word of God. These people were delighting in Apollos and Paul. And he said, these are no. He says somewhere there that um, that is verse uh, 7. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything but only God. Praise the Lord. I know for some of you who are founders of this church, um, I'm the one who is enjoying many things. I came when the boardroom is workable. There are many things that were not here. One as we son. That is nothing. Apollos or Apollo. Let the word of God be preached. Hallelujah. He says that let your goal be right. When uh, there are people who are giving offerings somewhere, I don't know where, but I remember in a church not in Sitom. And they said, we have seen that tithe has not been appropriated to us. That is not your goal. When you do it to God, leave it to God. Amen? Do what is right. Just like we'll be talking next week, pay tax and go home. And pray that the government will do the right thing. Are we together? Let's be people that know what is our goal in every place we are in. One of our pastor's son was a lawyer and touched me the other day. He resigned because when he went to the, um, the field, he realized it was very difficult to work. And so when he was testifying the other day that he was being told that now decision are always made elsewhere. Before Nakuja, he was doing a a magistrate in the eastern side of this country. Then we are trying to ask them, you serve God because there are things you can't move. You serve God and do what is right and stop looking at what others are doing. Their goal must be right. Number two, their standard, verse nine. Verse nine says this, for we are fellow workers in God's service. You are in God's field, God's building. Now, what is our standard of our salvation. Is my standard measured by Elder Philip's work? Because, you know, some people even thought that to be a pastor, I used to think that way, you must be a singer. Until somebody said the other day that I know why I don't sing well. It's because I preach well. So you can't do all. Are we together? But some of our pastors that pastored us in our local church, they would wake up and say, Bas. Then our pastor must sing first. And preach. Mimi ni kiimba hapa music team wana zima yo kitu ukoze. Now, you must know your standard. Because some of you have refused to worship God. Because your standard is wrong. The foundation on which you are standing and measuring yourself against is not right. Now, you need to change that. For many different babies, there are babies who circle a lot. Some circle at night, some during the day. But in the end, let them circle. Are we together? Let your standard be right. Praise the Lord. There are some that circle too much until they must get some additional milk. Yeah? Praise the Lord. <laughs> but let your standard be right. Let your standard be right. Let it be the foundation of your word. We seek to actually encourage many of us that we use the Bible in applying all truths in relationships and many things. And I pray that is it. So if you want to move from milk, Check your standards that you are using to measure, to judge people. You okay? You may not judge people in your own eyes. Allow other people also to, to give you and allow the word of God to illuminate you and see whether what you are doing is right. The standard. Their mission, which is the drive, which is not different from uh, the goal. Yeah? He talks of dedicated different tools, but one mission, to build Christ's church. So, if you look at a place where I emphasize, there was some gold, there was silver. So he said that in a building of a house, when you are going for mission, kuna watu atatumia land cruiser, wengine utatumia bicycle, wengine utaenda route 11. Okay? But he says that all those things will be done. Then God will come to judge and put fire on those things. And then the fire will test the tools that you are using. Now, while wood and hay may refer to what I will imagine to be inferior tools, God wants us that when we go to serve him or when we are giving the quality of our service, it must be of the finest quality. Are we together? It must be of the finest quality. And that, it is not on the amount. It is not on the time. 
It is that you would give God a one hour service, but a quality service. One as we son. That you would give God an offering of two shillings, like that lady that gave to you, but it's a sacrificial offering. That is what he means. Because when God comes to judge, he judges you against yourself and against the word of God and your ability. Praise the Lord. Now, let your drive and your mission be right if you are growing in the things of God. So, don't look at hay and gold to mean positions. And no, no, no. He talks of, he, he was talking about just simple truths of us applying the word of God. Allegiance. Now, now he talks of the two allegiance here. Yeah, he talks of Paul and Apollos. But now, you must also know the third person, God. Where is our allegiance? Many times, our allegiance is either this side or this side. But God is asking them, let it be this side. Amen? Praise the Lord. So he says, factionalism is not to be accepted because it is divisive. Now, for many that are growing from milk to solid food, you must also check your allegiance. Where do you pay your allegiance to? It will not just be even to our church. When you come to this place, do it as unto the Lord. That is what Paul is telling. That is what Paul is telling to these people. He said he planted, he would, but that is inconsequential to what God wants. If we want to move from milk to solid food, let's check our allegiance. Even some of us in our families, I dare say, check your allegiance. If it should be to God as to one another, not neglecting. This is very important for you as a couple, but pass to God. The more we go towards God, the more we get together. But the more we get to the sideways, the more the byways become greater. The more we have so many degrees with nothing to change. Praise the Lord. Check your allegiance with whom? Relationships, verse 8. He says this. The one, um, the one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose. Okay? Um, and they each will be rewarded according to their own labor. How do we relate? How do we relate? For many of you who um, build houses, they must relate. You get one fundi who directs the whole project, but you cannot get some people mutu anakuja, anapiga musumari, mungina anapiga musumari, ya ukuta na ulikuwa weke. It must be in synchrony. Are we together? Even in watering, I do some planting. You cannot just come and water some seedlings that are just growing and you put a lot of water. Some seedlings, there's some relationship that need to be done that brings the synchrony. And that Paul asks us to check. Every growing Christian need to check on the relationship. I'm preaching to myself also, one as well. How do I relate to one another. In my initial career, I told people that I was a teacher. And uh, I raised to the rank of the deputy in a boys' school. Um, I used to be a very firm teacher. Please, I laugh. And I, the, the, during my reign as a, as a deputy and uh, the DOS, we didn't have a deputy. I was doing the roles. No student went on rampage. No one. You know, I was receiving the, every first form one was asked to come with hawk sticks. And they used to be kept in my office. And some of them would do some work of disciplinary. <laughs> so um, I, I asked myself, I would make timetable uh, for teachers. So there was another adult teacher who had been interdicted and we employed him. So I just by mistake gave him more lessons. But anyway, my lessons were to be few because I was doing some other things. But now, um, but I didn't communicate. I didn't communicate. So there was some rough time there. Then there was also some rough time with boys because there was a day we got a new teacher and they made noise on the parade. And with my strictness, that time I told all of them to kneel down and I got my hog stick. And they were from threes, all of them. Um, after that exercise, I've asked my God to help me on my relationship. I used to be that elder where you may not know. I taught Rasul Alakram in Nakuru. It's now currently used for something. And uh, it has a history that during my reign, they didn't go on ramp. When I left that school, it was burned down. 
But boys were tough. You know, we used to get these boys from Mombasa. And they were tough. They were tough. Relationships. How do we relate with even antagonized people? Now, the world is now conversation. The world is conversation. I love eating chicken. For many of you who don't know, please, you need to know. But now, there is another thing I've discovered with my cocks. They are no longer fighting. Uh, come Kukuzen is going to be, the one has really changed. Even chicken are not fighting. <laughs> now, we need to move at a place of conversations. Unaangalia tu yu naona yeko na nguvu, unanyamaza, unaenda za, unaenda za. The world is conversation. Relationships, one as well son. I was observing the animal behavior. Uh, when I brought another, I thought they would fight. Nikaona tu ingine, ikachukua njia zake, ikaenda, idisimama kidogo, sikaangaliana, ikaenda. There is something that the Lord is speaking through this chicken. <laughs> now, many of you have not mastered this. Our relationships should not be divisions. Even the world, we are going towards diplomacy. Paul talks about this. And I want it to sink in our mind. The foundation which I've already talked about in verse 11. Um, for no one can lay a foundation other than the one which has already been laid. When we are growing, ask ourselves every day, what are some of the fundamental things I need to do as a Christian? I need to pray. I need to read the word of God. I need to be in a community of believers like we talk every day, every Sunday in this place. Where is my foundation? Where do I stand? Because if you are a great man standing on a very shallow ground, you will sink one day. You think one day. For many of you who do investment, larger investment, ask for you to do the risk assessment and you ensure and ask yourself, will I be willing to lose this? And if I lose, what would I gain? The foundation on which we stand. Every person that wants to grow in the things of God and move from milk to this must ask themselves, where are they standing? I love babies. Take a small baby, even three months, and throw them up. They will laugh because they know you will hold them. Foundation on which they stand. Okay? Our baby was asking us the other day, you buy us a tractor. You know, they can ask you big things because they know you are the foundation. Okay? As they see everything. Everyone was asking a bicycle. We go and check bicycle and say, December, April. They know the foundation where they stand. They can pass and say, Daddy, why do you buy for us you, you, from KFC? You know why you don't go to KFC. But they know where they stand also. Praise the Lord. We are children of God. And God has given us an open check of growth, of doing exploit. The sky is the limit. Praise the Lord. I pray that we understand this. Because the foundation, you are not going to lay it. God has laid it. If you want to move there from there, you need to do it. three things that you need to do or four, and then we're done. For you to get to mature, resist sin. What Paul is telling them is saying, be intentional in growth. You need to grow. For many of you who have done nutrition, when your baby is not growing, you feed them certain foods. You are intentional on what you are eating. I'm praying because I just want to be like a Dalaktabai. This body is good, my friend. When people are shouting, you just do like this. But when you are heavy... You, you, do not, you will be finished. You are intentional on exercises. Some of you men, do it like, we agreed last time that men will not be eating yamachoma because we realize majority of them are not intentional on food. They are just drinking milk, eating meat, boil, cook, all of them in soup. After soup, they say, bring kachumbari. My friend, intentional. Intentional. Intentionality is what you do. We need to resist some few things for us to remain fit. God and Paul in this place, I see these people are not resisting anything. Just the way they were living kind of life, they want to live it in the spiritual life. There are things we must resist. Tell your neighbor, resist. Yes, we must resist politics that is divisive. We must resist nepotism and all those kind of things. We must resist. To resist means kukata. Are we together? So to resist is not very easy. So we must resist this and then do what is right. Number two, we must refocus. We must refocus. He's telling them, you guys have not been able to, 
they are focused on Apollos and, uh, and this. But he's telling them, refocus. These people are not just there. They were sent by a maker. And so, you refuse being lukewarm. And just looking at the mere work they do, look at the God in them. Praise the Lord. When you refocus, God will help us to see good in each one of us. Praise the Lord. We are not perfect. Your senior pastor is not perfect. Your elders are not perfect. The church is not perfect. Neither your president is perfect. But you need to refocus and ask yourself, how did this person found themselves here? A wise man has said that if you see a tortoise up the tree, somebody put it there. So we're asking that the tortoise is on the tree. Go and ask who sent the tortoise up there and stop attacking the tortoise on the tree. Praise the Lord. Refocus. Refocus. One as we son. My friend, I'll put up for you. You need to go and ask yourself. Refocus. Refocus. People here are blinded by a pause, and yet God has sent them to do the work. When you see the tortoise on the tree, somebody put it there. Go for the one who put If you can find it, praise the Lord. Redefine, redefine. You define your relationships. Now, um, we have a casual way of relating with God. We have a casual way of relating with one another. In this sermon, as we look at moving from milk to solid food, I want you to go and redefine. The word redefine comes from the word that you do it again. Redefine. How am I relating with God in my personal life and many things? Because many times, many of us have not redefined our relationships. You being in another relationship, you get in another. Just take it like a boyfriend. You stopped having another. Um, I've seen one of my mentee, um, when he was almost getting married, he realized he had so many girlfriends. He had to change lines. He was redefining his relationship. One as we son. Weka Maisha Sambamba. Are we together? Yes, some of us are just living casually. Redefine your relationship. And this may call maybe for application that you have an accountability partner and let them give you feedback. How am I doing in my spiritual growth? Yeah, am I just taking milk? Am I growing in the things of God? I have people who can say that I saw this man one day when he was just reading one scripture, but now he can read two. Redefine your relationship. Also with God. How am I relating with God on my daily basis? I've been reading one chapter per day. I've been going to church. I say some of you come a little bit late, but not every day late, okay? Even at work, redefine, redefine your relationship and that will help you. And then number five is re-energize. Re-energize, you re-energize. Because if you continue serving God with wood and hay all the days of your life, then you are not growing. One as we son. I dare say that when you are growing, you need to pray more. One day you get promoted, you ask God that I need to increase my tithe. I need to, that one's automatic. I need to increase my offering. Re-energize. Because if you continue giving God hay every day, every, every day, then you are not growing. Find an area to serve. One of the things why many people are not growing is because they are not serving. I remember when I gave my life to Christ in 19, on the 19th of December, 1999. The following day, I came to church. They asked me to do an opening prayer. Here, you must do membership class at Damaleche. But that time, we can hear to me, we saw my scripture. The following Sunday, we came to Sunday school. We grew, literally, because somebody gave us a role to do. Why many people are not growing and they are remaining to be the same? Yani, they don't want to crawl. They don't want to... That's what I'm trying to do today. That some people may start to stand. Eh? They were not growing. Then they checked. Re-energize. Like somebody who is running. You are trying to put them some more energy. And the antidote I'm thinking here is We've been too passive as children of God. And by that fact, we have not grown. Some of you need to take intentional program, even at your workplace. 
And just ask people that, can we be studying the word of God for 10 minutes? And you will grow. Because you have just been taking milk. Na unajua hiyo maziwa ukipewa. Kuna tayari ndakana ufike upewe kitu ushike mwenyewe. Ikianguka unapewa shika vizuri. You know? That is what I'm talking about. Energize people to hold and take milk. Rather than spoon feeding them every day. Every day. We want people to serve. And I'm saying this passionately. Why we are not growing and having impact is because we have not been able to serve. And you can serve in the church, in the community. I don't know how many of you just take some time and even lead your family in a devotion or just take some event and then you are able to um, put some energy in some people. Because when we want to grow and move from make, we must engage. We must have a dialogue. We must have a conversation. There is no passivity in the things of God. God wants to see us moving from one level to another. Say amen. Not just to think that the, the work here is for pastors. Find out, can I serve? What will it take me for me to serve in Sunday school? What will it take me to serve in the youth church? What will it take me to serve in the ushering? What will it take me yeah, to do even some uh, cleaning in this place? You can find something. We have remained to be milk. I know some of you have done good in giving offering, but today I want you to move to the solid food. Ask yourself, beyond my touch and offering, can I give God some time, an hour to do that? We're looking for counselors, professional counselors that can be here. There are people who come here and they say, I don't want to talk to a pastor. I want to talk to just a professional counselor and confide my things. Those are areas that I'm thinking, do you do that? And that will be good for you. There are some of us who would just choose and say, I love somebody came and asked me, Pastor, what can I actually, apart from my tithes and offering, what do you want me to be doing? By the way, the youth church, oh, who's my elder in charge of youth church? We'll be receiving flowers, courtesy of somebody else. This one was given, by the way. So the youth also, somebody asked and said, the youth church also need to be having something like this. That is what you are talking about. No party in the things of God. But even the lady who does for us the flowers, she has given herself just to help us do that. Re-energize is the word I'm talking about. And finally, as I bring this to a conclusion, I want to say that God desires us to be transformed. And then we transform our families. And then we transform our churches. And then we transform our communities. And then we shall transform our nation. That is growth. That is growth. Some of you are good, and we are happy sometimes even to have Mutuet. And I'm very happy for some of you if you are part of our people up there. But we don't see any of your shilling dropping home. We want to see you. Yeah? Some of you need to go back to our villages and put a community project. I'm not just talking about giving to the church. We want to actually transform our families. And I see people that are able to go in their community and put up a tap of water. People say, buy help us be visiting in this place. We have that tap of water. Go to a school, buy a desk, buy a book for somebody. And that will be good. This is what we are talking about. The people that are going to transform communities. It's been said that actually very few people are actually successful in life. One person, actually, um, who is living abroad, they were looking at... Um, the transaction that goes to Africa is having a lot of dependence. I thank God they are doing that. But are you part of that, people, that when God has lifted you up, you will allow some people to eat? We'll be, we'll be harvesting maize. Allow some, that some, you know, in the older days, that people who come, they can have something from that particular. You leave nothing in the moist camp. You need to leave something in quotes for the gods to come. The people that don't have anything. Transformation. Touching lives. Life of impact. If there is any desire, which I've talked to Pastor Patrick and Reverend Petronila, we want to see an impact here. I don't know. I'm told the last time we went to the, to the police in this place is a long time. We need to go there and even help and paint for them. Buy an umbrella for this, some of the people that are here. We are not thinking far. They, but the border who are here, I'm preaching, they are just there. I, I wish when you are going up, you would lower your, your screen and say, oh man, you didn't go to church, have some chocolate, but next time, welcome to church. These are the things I'm talking about. 
in terms of moving from milk to solid food, being able to do something that will create an impact and that will be good. So we have been taking milk for so long, I believe so, and it's time we start chewing solid foods. And I've mentioned those solid foods for some few examples, and I want to see impact. Because um, <coughs> John Maxwell says that everything rises and falls on leadership, so people can rise. We can rise every day and do something in our community. That's my sharing this morning. I want us to bow our head down and pray for ourselves and think of areas of growth. It may not be in any of the areas I've spoken. Maybe as I was speaking, you have felt of a need in your institution, some of you, or even in your family of somebody you can help. Some of you need to go and even help some of the bright children that are not going to school and yet their parents are drunkard. Those are the things I'm talking about, from milk to solid food. Impact, growth. Some of you need to be intentional every day. They walk to this church and they think this pastor needs to improve his vocabulary. You pray for me to increase vocabulary. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We honor you for speaking to us. Indeed, Lord, we are desirous for growth. Growth in your things. That we may not just look at mere leaders and each other, either Paul or Apollos. But we look at who, what are you doing in Paul, in Apollos? And what are we ought to do now that we are born again? Some of us have given their life to Christ during the time we were doing a holy communion. I pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, help us to grow, that we may not go back to our carnality in the things we have been doing, oh God, and yet expect different results. In the name of Jesus, transform us, oh God. I pray for Sita Meldoret, the Lord you are touching men and women, that you will create impact in this life, in this place, in this community, in this city, in this town, in the name of Jesus, oh God. I thank you, oh Lord. I know that you are speaking to someone in this place. Some, oh God, need to go and be able to be seen as their values and perspective changing, their goals, their mission, their orientation in all that they do, their drive in the name of their allegiance, their foundation. Oh my God, I thank you. I honor you. May you produce fruits that will last in us, oh God. May we every day when we do all that we do, we ask ourselves, to whom do we belong? Who are we and who are we? whose are we? We thank you, Lord. We are your children. And I pray that you walk in through us, through your power, through your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we pray and believe. Amen. Amen.